Hey guys, welcome back. So today we are gonna be talking about some of my favorite products from the month of May, probably April and March as well, since I haven't done a favorites video since the whole quarantine thing started. Well, not a beauty favorites video anyway. I think I did like a self-care favorites, but no real makeup product updates recently. So I wanted to get them all in one video for you guys. I will say that a lot of these you guys have seen me use in my summer sun-kissed no foundation makeup routine. So if you haven't checked that out yet, definitely check it out. And yeah, I will kind of like elaborate a little bit more on some of those. So if you've seen that video, you'll probably recognize some of these products, but yeah, let's just dive right in. So I'm gonna start off with the products that I did mention in that video, just so we can get them out of the way. Not that we need to get them out of the way, but I wanted to address them first. So first up, I wanted to talk about a product that I have used, I think probably 98% of the times I did my makeup since I purchased this, I've used this 98% of the time. So this is the Glossier Cloud Paint in the color Storm. So these are not like a new item, but they're new to me and I just, I'm obsessed. I've tried so many cream blushes. This is hands down my favorite formula, my favorite shade, and I just love it. I also mentioned in my video that I picked up this shade, which is called Dawn. The color is very true to what the packaging looks like. So this, I've tried it. I like it kind of mixed with this, but on its own, if I'm being totally honest, it just reminds me of Hot Cheetos on my fingers, but on my face. Maybe maybe that would be a good blush idea, you know? <laughs> Tap on some Cheeto dust on your face, but that's essentially what this looks like on me. So I don't know if it's my skin tone or if my skin is not deep enough to pull this off, but it's just really not that flattering on me. So I definitely prefer the shade Storm, which is a gorgeous sunburnt kind of deep, brick red almost shade with like almost like a brownie undertone. It's just so flattering on me and I just cannot say enough about the formula of these. So if you wanna see me apply them, check out the video that I mentioned. So then the next two products from that video that I have been obsessed with ever since I got them, they are new to the market. They're both from Ilia, which is one of my favorite makeup brands. They're a clean beauty brand and I just love their soft focus powder. I go hard for that and I go hard for these now as well that they are out. So we have the bronzing powder in the shade Novelty. It also comes in a lighter shade, but this shade is just absolutely perfect for me and my skin tone. It blends out so nicely and I just love the color and the formula. And then the other product is their Daylight Highlighting Powder. And this is in the shade Starstruck. So this is a really pretty kind of like more subtle, rose goldy, a little bit towards the bronzy side of highlights, but there it is right there if you guys can see it. It's just very natural, it's subtle, it's perfect for every day, it's not too like frosty looking and I really like it. So these two products, again, if you wanna see them in action, check out that video. Next up we have the contour palette that I mentioned in that video, which is from Dior. So I wish that they sold these in singles because honestly, these top two shades, I don't really love them for anything in particular. I mean, they're fine for eyeshadows, but I don't like use them on my face. This color makes a really good eyeshadow as well, but these two, meh, I could do without. But this shade down here, which is the light contour shade, is the perfect, perfect contour shade for me. It's almost like a khaki, olive toned, very neutral, but not like pinky neutral undertone. Like Benefit Hula is pretty neutral, but on my skin tone, it pulls really kind of like pinky red undertone, whereas this one is like the perfect shade and undertone for me. So it's a nice cool color. I love it for my nose contour and just kind of like chiseling any areas that I like. I don't do like a full on contour. Most of you guys know that, but if I want to add any kind of you know, chiseling, I will use this shade here, which I love. And then one last product from that video that I wanted to mention is the new Hourglass Veil Setting Spray. So this is amazing if you love you know, soft focus products like I do. It definitely blurs everything. It makes it look just very 
smooth and airbrushed. This, I will say, it definitely has more of like a dewy, radiant finish. So if you're not into that, I would suggest, you know, not getting this or pairing it with an additional setting spray that is matte. So um, you could go in with like Urban Decay All Nighter or something first and then go in with this or, you know, go in with this and then go in with the Urban Decay All Nighter. But I really love this and it gets rid of that powdery makeup look better than like any setting spray that I have tried. And it also has a really nice fine fine mister like that mist is just everything and the packaging is really nice too it's very sleek and minimal kind of reminds me of like burrito or byredo burrito no it's not burrito i don't know how to say that brand but the fragrance brand that's very kind of like black and white minimal packaging this is what that reminds me of the packaging anyway so the next i wanted to mention this sunscreen which i talked about in my morning skincare routine so i love my elastin hydro tint mineral sunscreen i've been raving about that but a lot of you guys said it's not available to you in your country they don't like ship it outside of the u.s which really sucks but i know that sunscreen and skincare regulations are all different all over the world so anyways i wanted to recommend this one to you guys because this is what i will use when i'm not using my elastin sometimes i just like to switch it up or sometimes i don't want a tint at all so i've been loving this one it's from first First Aid Beauty, it's their new weightless mineral sunscreen with zinc oxide, it's SPF 30, and the texture of this is very liquidy, and I don't even know how to really describe it, but as you're putting it on, it will feel kind of like oily almost. I'm trying to think of what I could compare it to. But it's almost like oily as you're putting it on and you definitely have to let it dry down a little bit but there's no white cast at all it blends really nicely into the skin and it also makes kind of like a really nice makeup primer but i will say you definitely have to let it dry down and give it a chance because when you first apply it it's kind of like okay this is a little bit greasy but just give it a moment and let it sink in let it soak in and it's amazing so if you're looking for a non-tinted spf that is mineral based, this one is amazing. Okay, so next product is a new favorite of mine. It's a new release and I have not shown myself using this in a video yet, but I probably should. It is the new Fenty Cream Cheeks Out Bronzer. So mine, don't judge. It's very gross looking. There's like hairs, they're like brush hairs, not like human or dog hairs. They're just from like a brush and I need to like pick them out, but now is not the time. But anyways, this is the shade Teddy, which I am wearing this today. I love this. I originally had gotten this shade Macchiato in PR, which I did like, but on my skin tone, it kind of pulled a little bit ready pink undertone. Not very extreme, but this one is more flattering. And this is actually really similar in undertone to the Ilias. So this is definitely deeper, but I will say that these bronzers are a little bit sheer. So if you have like a lighter shade, you would have to build it up. And I feel like when you build them up, they don't really perform that well because I don't know, the, the texture of these is very like emollient and almost like greasy. So I feel like they don't build up that well. And same with the blushes, but I do really like this. It's a little bit finicky with application for me. I feel like sometimes it will look patchy, but I found the best brush for me to apply it is this one from It Cosmetics. I mentioned this in my brush video, but this is, I don't even know, the name is rubbed off, but it's like a flat top kind of like foundation brush. It's angled, it's very dense, and I feel like you want something that's pretty dense just so it packs on the color. So I just will dip into that and you know just apply it to wherever I wanna like contour or sculpt or bronze. And I really like this one because it has that triangular shape. It helps you get a nice like straight edge and it applies it really well. So I would definitely recommend applying it with like a denser brush. So yeah, I do really like this and I do find that I have to set it with some sort of powder, otherwise it will slide around on me, but it is, you know, fairly sweat resistant, water resistant. I would just say it's not like touch resistant. So you definitely would wanna set it if you're like a face toucher. So the next up we have a powder blush and I picked this up, I wanna say it was like Walmart or maybe Rite Aid, but it's from Almay. It's one of their new healthy hue blushes and this is in the shade so peachy so this I'm actually wearing today it is so beautiful I love the formulation of these they're fairly like sheer 
and I feel like sometimes that's good for a blush. So I just kind of like lightly swatched it. It kind of adds like a watercolor finish. Sometimes with blush, like if they're too pigmented, it's just very hard to apply and like blend and get it to not look patchy. So these are very forgiving and I would say beginner friendly if like you're scared of blush. Definitely try these out. I want to get like all of the colors because this one is, you know, a really pretty peach shade. They have a berry shade and then like a nude shade and I definitely want to get the others because I just love how these apply. So I wanted to recommend this because I feel like there aren't that many good drugstore blushes out there that like wear well and look nice on the skin. So I'm really glad I decided to pick this up and like I said, I'll definitely be getting more shades. So next up we have another product from Alme and this is their Alme Brow Styler. So I have mentioned the tinted version of this in the past, which I do really like. And I didn't even know that they made a clear shade. So this, I really love how it keeps my brows in place and I honestly really love the brush as well. So the tinted one has a similar brush. I feel like the way that the brush is so small like this helps it get every single brow hair and separate them you know what i mean like some brow brushes i feel like kind of clump the brow hairs together and that makes them look na less natural so this i really like how it just separates them and makes the individual hairs like go where you want them to so i really like this brush i feel like some people will love it or hate it but i personally really like it and it holds my brows really nicely without feeling like too crusty because i don't like the feeling of like having glue on my eyebrows even if it makes them stay i don't like that crunchy feeling so this one um isn't too crunchy so i wanted to mention that next up i wanted to mention a loose powder so this is a bougier product but i feel like the price compared to how much product you get isn't really that bougie at all but this is from chanel and i don't have any chanel makeup so i was very excited to order this and it came in a really cute chanel box and i just loved it but anyways this is their new poudre universel libre i don't know how to say that it's french i am french but i don't know how to speak french anyways um, this is their new formulation. So they used to only have, I believe, three shades of this. And now they have like, I don't know, like seven or ten shades. So it comes in more shades. And they also reformulated it. So there is no talc in here. I'm 99% sure that this is a talc-free product. And that's why I bought it. So I have the shade 30, which is just like this light, you know, medium translucent type shade. And this looks so so nice on the skin. I never tried the original formula, so I don't know how it compares, but I have it on my face today, just like all on the other parts of my face. On my under eye, I still use my Ilia Soft Focus Powder, which by the way, you can see just how tiny this little guy is. You get, uh, how much do you get? You get nine grams in here and you get 30 grams in here. And I believe this is like 50 something and this is 30 something. I'm not really sure, but you get a ton of product in here. Like it'll take me a long time to go through this. So I really like this and I'll definitely continue to use it. I'm very picky about face powders, but this one makes my skin look very smooth and airbrushed. And I love that. And I love that it's talc free. And who doesn't love a Chanel product? I mean, how cute does this look on your makeup vanity? It looks very cute you know, very classy, bougie, ratchet, or however that song goes. <laughs> All right, so then next up we have a lash serum. So if you've been following me for a while, I have been raving about Grande Lash MD as my lash serum for years. I think I was using it for like three or four years now. And I recently stopped using it because I wanted to try this one. And also because that one kind of causes like a dark discoloration along your lash line and kind of just like in the eye area in general, which isn't like a huge deal breaker, but I wanted to just try something new. And this one I saw an Instagram ad for and it said that it had no discoloration, no side effects, nothing like that. So I finally bought it. It's definitely way more expensive, but this line is now available at Sephora. When I bought it, it wasn't available at Sephora yet. But anyways, I've been using this for not even a month yet and I've already noticed a difference in my lashes like I feel like my lashes look so long and there's no discoloration so this is the dr. Devgan scientific beauty platinum long lash for longer denser stronger eyelashes and eyebrows so this is amazing it's definitely more expensive but 
like I said, I've only been using this maybe like three weeks now and I've already noticed a difference. So I'll definitely continue to use this. It says that you get full results and I think like four months and I haven't even been using it for four weeks yet. So definitely would recommend that. Speaking of lashes, I wanted to talk about a mascara next. So this one is brand new to the market. I got it, I think two or three weeks ago in PR and I love this. So this is from Marc Jacobs and this is their new At Lashed mascara. First of all, I love the name, At Lashed, Q out of James. I just think that's genius. Anyways, uh, this is their lengthening and curling mascara. So the brush looks like this, very simple, you know, basic kind of wand. And I will say it definitely lengthens my lashes. And I don't, I wouldn't say that it curls them, but it holds my curl, which for me is very important because my lashes have literally no curl at all. Like they grow in like a downward slope. There's no bend, there's nothing to them. So it's important for me to find a mascara that will hold my straight ass lashes up in place because I hate when they're like drooping or you know I curl my eyelashes and then the next thing I know they're just flat again. So I was very surprised that this works because the formulation of this is quite wet and I usually kind of steer clear from wet formulations because they weigh my lashes down but this one doesn't and it also is lengthening without having those weird little fibery things which I cannot stand. I feel like it just looks like chunks at the end of your eyelashes and that is not what I'm into. So yeah, I just wanted to mention that really quick. I'm a mascara junkie, so I will try like literally any new mascara that comes out. And this one I was pleasantly surprised by. All right, and then I have two more products I wanted to mention and they are both hair products. So the first one I wanted to mention is this Playa California Salt Shampoo. So I mentioned this recently. I can't remember which video it was. Oh, maybe my Dyson hair tutorial video thing, um, but I do really like this. So it is a salt scrub and it has tea tree in there and sea salt and it smells definitely like tea tree oil. So if you don't like that, you're not gonna like the smell of this, but you follow it up with a conditioner anyway. So like the smell doesn't linger or anything. But I have to say, I do really like this. Um, it claims to exfoliate and treat the scalp to restore your natural oil balance, works gently to scrub away dead skin and flakes from the hair follicle, tea tree, works to alleviate dryness while providing a flesh, fresh cooling sensation. So it does all of that. It gets rid of flakes. I have psoriasis. This doesn't like treat it, but it definitely helps with the flakiness and like the buildup and like the irritation. So I'll definitely continue to use this. And the fact that it's a salt scrub, like when you're using this and you're rinsing it out of your hair, and the water is splashing it all around your face. As it's like dissolving and washing away, you can like taste the salt. And if you close your eyes, I swear, it feels like you're at the ocean and you have like salty skin and water on your face. Like, I don't know what it is, it just makes me happy. So if you're into that sort of thing, that sensual experience, definitely check this out because I have really been enjoying it. <laughs> and then the last product I wanted to mention is a dry shampoo, which I used this today, but there was no saving me. I was out in the 90 degree heat and humidity doing a workout and then I didn't wash my hair before I filmed this video. So if it's looking rather gross, this, don't judge this because there's a dry shampoo can only do so much, right? But anyways, this is the Amica Perk Up Dry Shampoo. So this is actually a talc-free dry shampoo, which you guys know I love like, you know, talc-free powders. I didn't even know that talc was in a lot of dry shampoos. But I think that's what makes me like this product. The texture of this dry shampoo doesn't leave my hair feeling like that weird powdery residue. Like I don't like that feeling in my scalp. Like I know like that's probably what's absorbing the oil, but I don't like the feeling of that in my hair because I'm, I'm a hair flipper and I don't like to feel that when I'm flipping my hair. So this is really nice. It does a good job at soaking up the oils and it, it can get a little bit of a white residue if you spray it too close or spray it too much, but you can get rid of it. Like, you know, you can work it out. So um, I would just be mindful of that, but I do really like the smell of this. I don't know how to describe it. it smells really good and it's not overpowering because I don't like when all you can smell is your dry shampoo and it like interferes with 
like whatever scent you're wearing like perfume wise this does not do that it just adds like a nice refreshing scent that's not too much so definitely wanted to recommend this and yeah i'm very picky with dry shampoos so this is definitely one of my new favorites and my hairdresser gave me a pro tip to apply this on like day one hair before your hair is even greasy so if you use it as like a preventative measure then it extends the life of your shampoo even longer and any trick that helps me go longer without washing my hair i'm all about that so wanted to mention that because it's great. So yeah, that is going to wrap up my May favorites, everything that I've been loving and slapping on my face and hair, body, whatever. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know what some of your favorites have been in the comments below and I'll see you guys next time. Days are over. <laughs>